Hi everyone, welcome. Salam. Today we're going to talk about how energy is the economy. Now, I'm sorry I haven't posted in such a while. Uh, it's been a long time. I should have left you, but we've been like moving in between houses, and this is like close to the place that we'll be staying, God willing. Um, this is in Oxford, England, where my wife is studying, and then I'm following her around quite grumpily. Um, and it's cold here, and they're heading for a cold winter because they decided to poke a bear and it's screwing up energy prices. So just to give you an example of like what, how that happens in England, I'll take you to Infinity View first. Like this is Dunelm, which is where we've been just buying some like duvets and stuff. And this is like, so on the front page, they're like shop heating free warmth. And I found this crazy just how like capitalism devours, like even it's complete failures. like. Why do you want to have heating fee warmth? Like it's not warm, but it's like, welcome to the cozy life. Warm yourself, not the room. So like pretty catastrophic failure of like foreign policy and managing the economy and just like keeping your people warm is being framed as a shopping opportunity, which I guess it is for someone. Like that's, and this is real. So we were talking to a cousin here and they're like, yeah, I'm waiting to see how long I can wait until I turn on the thermostat. Like people in the neighborhood are competing to see this and she's getting lots of bedding and like electric blankets and stuff. And <clears throat> she has a pretty good job. So there's people who are really choosing between, you know, keeping the heat on and keeping food on the table. And that's a rough way to be in such a cold ass country. I'm freezing here. And we've got to start thinking, actually, you don't have to do anything, but since you're here, you might as well start thinking about how energy kind of isn't like part of the economy, how energy is the economy. And that's what we're going to talk about here. So when I talk about energy as the economy, like there's this thing called the Kardashev sale, scale of uh, civilizations, and that's for intergalactic civilizations. So I think a type one civilization harnesses the power of its planet which are something, some shit like that, like whatever the energy coming to its planet, like whatever you can get at home. The next one harnesses the power of its sun. And the next one harnesses the power like of a galaxy. And this is idea that like, we might be like missing some civilizations because they might have like built something around their sun to like capture all the energy. But in all those cases, the output or the type of a civilization is defined by the energy it harnesses. Um, I suppose this is problematic at a level, but I'm just using that to just show you if you think about it on a bigger scale, energy is civilization. And there's this author, Vaclav Smil, who wrote a book called Energy and Civilization. And he talks about it quite directly like that. He says, energy is the only universal currency. One of its many forms must be transformed to get anything done. And he goes through the history of energy from, you know, the sweat of your brow as in human labor to animal, draw to animal labor, and then to fossil fuel labor. And these are actually living processes. We think of fossil fuels as like, I mean, they're definitely not dinosaurs, right? Fossil fuels are the product of, so coal is a product of the like wood, and then oil is the product of decomposed uh, plank, like sea plant life, like plankton, and natural gas is phytoplankton. So like the little prawns that ate the sea plants. These are all like life energy, originally photosynthetic, which we've just like dug up and lit on fire. And there's a lot of it stored there. One sec. So energy, like the economy is the sum total of like all activity in a defined area. And it's generally life activity. So you can do that by like doing stuff with your brains or your like com computational power or your, your hands. And you can also do it like by burning or using other life forms. And that is the economy. And we don't really... We, we, I think we really underestimate how deeply integrated fossil fuels are with not just like, we think like, oh, okay, I'm going to switch to an electric car and I'm going to stop using like, you know, plastic packaging and it's going to be fine. And like, it's not going to be fine. There's this uh, climate campaigner called Vanessa, I think, Nakete, and yeah, she's great. And she says something called saying like, uh, we can't eat coal or drink oil which technically is true, but uh, if you think about it a bit more, it's kind of not true because fertilizer, right? Like we eat 
fossil fuels. Fertilizer is mostly done using natural gas. Like that was the green revolution, the application of fossil fuels to fertilizer, to food. So to get the amount of food that we need to sustain a, the population we have and the greed of the 1%, we put fossil fuels in our food and we haven't figured out how to not do that. Uh, I mean, in Sri Lanka, catastrophically, they tried to switch to like organic fertilizer for the whole country. And maybe it's possible using like ancient methods we've forgotten a long time ago, but it's, it is really hard to square that circle with, you know, the population we have now. And it's not just the fossil fuels are going to fertilizer to get the food from, you know, the farm to you, there is a lot of plastic involved and that plastic is preserving the food. That's, I mean, there'd be probably more food waste without the plastic. And you can see when you get this, there's some services here where they deliver the stuff without plastic and the costs are just much higher. So and, and plastic is a petrochemical like output. So in all those ways, and, and of course, getting the damn thing here, right? Like getting avocados here or like fruit in England at any time of the year, that requires like some ship pumping fossil fuels. And then for, to power that ship, you need some other ship moving the oil to get to that ship. And then to get that thing to your door through like next day delivery, you need like something else using fossil fuels. And then you're happy because like, oh, it didn't come in plastic. Like here, they don't like give you plastic bags. So they just bring your stuff and you'd like take the crate in and like unload it yourself and people feel like they're doing something and they're not, they have no concept of like how much actually needs to be done. Like there's a real amount of sacrifice and loss that's going to come with the transition away from fossil fuels. And I mean, God, I've lived through it. Like in Sri Lanka, like we ran out of dollars and we ran out of fossil fuels, well, petro, petro dollars, right? And like life sucks, <laughs> like you can't like run your economy. People like lose jobs, people lose livelihoods, people eat less. When you don't have fertilizer, farmers like don't grow food. People don't eat. Like we're talking famine levels of sacrifice that are required to have the actual climate cuts we need to preserve the future. And people don't think about that. They don't think about the fact that energy is the economy. Like you can't just decouple it like that. So what Vaclav Smil said is only the uh, only the inputs of fossil fuel energies directly as fuels and electricity and indirectly in agricultural chemicals and machinery could sustain an expanding population and a higher per capita supply of food. So the population level we have now through what they call the green revolution, I mean, it was a black revolution, like it, it was a fossil fuel revolution. And our population is largely limited by its energy supply. And the other problem here, of course, is that even given fossil fuel use, right, we could have stretched our planetary limit a bit longer, if not just for the rampant greed of the 1%, because I think the richest 1% account for more than double the emissions of the bottom 50%. Like America is going around asking Africa to cut their emissions, which is a joke. They're responsible for like 0.5%. It's just the sheer amount of greed. And even people here in England who make the most posturing about like, being climate conscious and shit, like just the sheer amount of like cardboard waste and like all this crap we're producing. Like I produce more garbage in like a month here than I have in like a year in Sri Lanka. And just a different scale. And then you do a few things like on the top. So you like feel better about yourself, but on the whole, you're like fucking the universe. Now this energy system, I played SimCity when I was younger right? Or SimCity 3000. And in that you're supposed to progress through energy levels. So you, um, you know, you start with whatever fossil fuel energy, then you're supposed to go to nuclear. And the kind of promise of last century was that like, okay, we unlocked this other energy source. Um, and then we could have transitioned to that. And that would have maybe been different. And then maybe we could have kicked this can further down the road, but nuclear stuff had such picturesque risks with like Chernobyl and so on, which was actually in hindsight, well managed, but it had such like scary risks that we didn't go that way. But even in the 1970s, like renewable energy could have gotten that push with the oil crisis. Like one response to the 1970s oil crisis would have been to like invest in renewable energy, stuff that didn't depend on like, like the countries in OPEC. But the response was instead to like, you know, corrupt those countries and like coup them slowly over a few years and to just develop oil sea, like uh, deposits in the North Sea and like just develop white people's fossil fuels, like fracking and shit came later. 
the answer was just like to double down on fossil fuels. Even now in the face of like the current like cry, uh, even now in the face of current price shocks, these fronts to like open up more land for drilling. Like, I mean, it's like heroin, right? Like if you like heroin, you're just going to keep doing heroin. That's the kind of like societal problem with fossil fuels. They are fucking excellent for what they're doing. But in, and then what we get from the countries that like sort of led this drive is theater. So places like Norway will say, oh, we're like 90% electric cars, but two thirds of their exports are fossil fuels. And unlike some of the other Scandinavian countries, which are at least committing, which is in self bullshit to like stop drilling more, Norway's like, yeah, we're going to drill more. So everyone's drilling their way literally to the bottom. And yet on a fundamental level, this it's hard to see how else this goes because energy is the economy and the economy is sort of like human activity. And for us to really change our energy supply would be a dramatic reduction in human activity and human life and humans being alive. And that's the paradox we're in because sort of like as a civilization, there's this idea of like evolutionary peaks and valleys, which has been disputed. But the idea is that like, say like once you evolved to like having like two eyes, it's like very difficult to like have like one eye on a stick. Like you're not gonna like evolve backwards. So that creature with two eyes just has to die. And then some other creature with like one eye on a stick would like take over that niche. And to, to a large degree, that's what I see happening with civilization. Like we progress so far along the fossil fuel track that it's not like we can't like go back down. To be fair, whales have done it. Like whales came to land and they were like, fuck this. And they went back to the ocean. But it's very rare evolutionary. And I see this as more a biological process than political. And so the whole thing, I don't think people understand how much the whole thing is just going to have to come down. And the people who have written about this, like Joseph Tainter, the complex of complex, uh, complex societies, um, these are cycles. And our civilization is so tied with energy and energy is so much the economy that for us to change our energy supply means that the economy has to crash and the civilization has to crash. And then out of that, inshallah, something else would have to evolve. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'm sorry it's been so long. Now I have like a setup. Um, it's a bit echoing here. This is like a closet but this is like my space and I don't have to move the camera all the time. Um, thank you to the few hundred people who watched this. I really enjoy talking to you. Um, and I'll try to post every day now. I say that all the time, but I won't.